Thank you for listening to the Roll Wise Guys. My name is Mike, and I'm here with my good friend, Brent. Say hello, Brent. Hello, everybody. And this week, uh, we looked at what we could possibly talk about, and it seems like the dumpster fire that is Games Workshop, not Games Workshop, Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, uh, D&D. Let's go with D&D. That is, uh, D&D is still ablaze and smells like flaming trash. So, uh, Brent... <laughs> How since our last recording last week, uh, did you expect it to be this much of a meteoric fall from grace, or did you expect something different? Well, I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't quite realize how quickly Hero D and D would fall to villainous Wizards of the Coast. Um, yeah. Like they went from oh everybody loves D and D to the most reviled nerd company I've I've seen in a long time. Like I don't even think GW when it's when it messed up some of its stuff got quite as much fire and brimstone pitchfork raid the castle uh, stuff as as uh, as Wizards has has inspired over the last week um with its announcements or lack thereof announcements well i mean it's been pretty amazing because i have to say like frankenstein's monster actually got less of a reception from the t- the villagers than i think D has managed in this past week ever since that I, it, what was it the gizmodo article that kind of started started i think that started the ball rolling because up until this point i mean the only thing that we really knew about the ogl and everything like that was what they had the D and D Beyond staff had posted back on D and D Beyond. They, you know, had like a little FAQ post, right? The OGLs, yep. SOD, and one D and D. I mean, that was really all people had to go with. Although people had, you know, kind of toyed with the idea that the OGL, because once it was announced, I think that you know people kind of started dooming and glooming, and that's what caused the FAQ. But once there was actually some, there, there was something that people could sink their teeth into in the form of that article. I mean, that's that's what really. Well, not- that's a really hurt. <laughs> not just something to not just something to sink their teeth into, but black and white mm. like inferences that like the inferences of if you produce something under the OGL, we 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 could claim ownership of all of your products. Um yeah. like stuff like that is just oh boy, that is not man, that is the quickest way to just sound like a super villain. Like oh it's I mean, it's, it's, it's horribly, it's horribly bad. And so I think, so I think that the first thing, you know, we can say is that, you know, we're obviously not the biggest podcast. I have no delusions of grandeur or illusions of grandeur, but whichever one it may be, I, I have neither of those. But I mean, even from our perspective, and I think we mentioned this last week, is it, I, I think it's important for people to recognize is we support the creators, the dreamers, the imagineers that really help build this hobby. And I think that, you know, we do that through every way we can. I mean, you and I have both back Kickstarters. We both go into our local hobby stop, you know, our hobby, hobby shop. Let's go there. I don't go to hobby stops. It's like, it's like a bad gas station. Um, but, you know, I mean, we, you know, I mean, cause this has been a, a hobby that has been built over the last, what going on 40 plus years, you know, 40 going on 50 years, whoever, yeah. whatever you might want to call it. And I mean, yeah. people have put, you know, so much passion into these projects and into this hobby that it's just, it's, it's amazing. And I mean, we have a long history with D&D and I, I mean, from a, a lot, like if you looked at my life in reverse, you would see a lot of, you know, a lot of entries about D&D playing games, having fun with my friends and all that kind of stuff. So Me it too. does suck that, you know, like people have really, that have hitched their wagon to this. And, you know, they've, they've burned the midnight oil, they've had jobs, and then they've also, you know, had these pet projects, and they've worked their hobby into their careers and all that kind of stuff, just to have the rug pulled so, so horribly out from under them. And so I think, I think from my perspective, anybody that listens to this stuff, if, you know, you want to really, if you really want to support those creators, go find them, you know, at this point, it sounds like everybody who is a big name in this, in, in this uh, field people from Cobalt Press, you know Matt Coville and his MCDM Productions or whatever it is. Okay. Um, those people—they're going to make their own games. I say, fuck Wizards. Let's go buy their game. Right. And, well, and hopefully, hopefully they're good. 
<laughs> well, like I said, I think one of the things that in the in a couple of things that I've I've because I I mean you can't you can't like go to your homepage or at least I can't go to my homepage on on YouTube without being like OGL video number forty seven. Um, and I watched two two interesting ones recently, kind of on opposite ends of the spectrum that aren't good. One was a guy saying that I basically feel like I've been used by wizards for the last few years because one of the reasons that they started the OGL is because the decline in D D. Like it was it was it was that time period where like World of Darkness mm-hmm. and all a lot of other games are starting to eat up eat up their 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 customer base with other games. And so mm-hmm. they decided to do this to like broaden the community. And that's been mm-hmm. kind of a staple since then. And to yeah. just suddenly go back on it and be like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. And as a matter of fact, if you're a content producer, fuck you. Like that's 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 really disingenuous. But then on the other side, mm-hmm. there was one that I saw where the guy said, you know, maybe there's a silver lining to this. And all of us third party, produ- third party, you know, writers, authors, video makers, maybe we can all find other places to express ourselves. And don't, we don't need maybe we don't need G. Um, I almost said Games Workshop too. Maybe we don't need Wizards and we don't need D&D. And I think I think yeah. that might be I think we're going to see a boom of more we're going to see a boom of games that are h- higher level than Heartbreaker I think where like you know bigger production companies, more people mm-hmm. that are that are pushing these games to eat up. I mean really <laughs> I guess here's here's the question that that's really of interest. Did Games Workshop just make the next wave of their worst competition? And I think and the mean, answer is you mean probably wizards, yes. Right? Or Wizards, yeah. Okay. Um, Games, Games Workshop, Workshop is, is going to hate company, us. Games Workshop is the company I usually refer to, has, has in the past, and not even, and it's been the, it's done a lot of evil, nerdy things in the past where it's basically abused its fan base, but never to the, like, never to this level. And that's why I, I follow up kind of fall on gw sometimes because they um have done things just for money that seems like an evil corporation that now wizards is doing so it's like they're interchangeable right now but um i mean did they just make did they just make their 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 biggest competition like pathfinder is putting out its own like ogl announcement like system agnostic ogl Mm -hmm. announcement now where it's saying like yeah make whatever the hell you want with our stuff and like yeah you know, and I think, I think again, somebody, somebody on Twitter said, "What they don't understand is D and D isn't your books or a hobby. It's not just a product. It's a feeling. Like mm-hmm. it's that nostalgia storytelling feeling. And the part that upsets me the most and makes me the saddest is those content creators who are going to lose revenue, who are going to have to find different jobs, who are not going to be able to be content creators." who might lose out because they can't make D and D content anymore. And the stories that they didn't get to tell, like that sort of stuff makes me sad. My hope is that all of those guys will one, turn into channels that say, don't buy wizards products. And two, buy our products. These are the stories mm-hmm. that we're telling now that are sister system agnostic or mm-hmm. are for other games, you know, um, you know, that sort of thing. So I have a question for you, Mike. Sure. What are three games you would suggest people look at to replace uh, their D and D? Well, I think it just depends on. Uh, I think it's going to depend a little bit on how the OGL stuff plays out. But some games that have interested me to look at from a D and D standpoint. Um, first of all, I think that you could probably uh, get into Forbidden Lands. Uh, you know, since I've been on this fantasy or not fantasy, but um, free league publishing kick i really think that you know there's a lot of interesting stuff that they can do and i think that forbidden lands looks really interesting because it has a lot of the exploration a lot of the you know a lot of the the fantasy kind of tropes that it that you would have in D if you so chose you you obviously wouldn't fight any mind flayers or anything like that um but it's been on a game on my list for quite a while um another game that i would say would be on my list um, you know, cause I, I have played it a little bit and I haven't played a ton of it. Cause usually when I was, you know, basically bisected between going down the path of going to Pathfinder or going to D and D, 
Uh, I went to D and D because that's what my pl- friends were playing, and everyone was calling Pathfinder when it was in that first iteration, Mathfinder, and that just didn't seem as much fun. But at this point, it seems like Pathfinder Second Edition has really refined the game quite a bit more. And while there may be still some crunchiness that happens in the game, uh, I think Pathfinder Second Edition looks really good, and I have some pretty fun adventures that if our group wants to get into something that's a little bit more campaign based, uh, they have some adventure paths that look really, really awesome. Um, And then lastly, I don't know. um, I think I'd probably have to say Shadows of the Demon Lord. I know that they're getting another another game coming out soon, but uh, I think that one looks a lot fun. It is a little bit grimdark uh, in terms of just like the setting and everything that happens along with that. So... um, I specifically, I think, I think I'm choosing three non-OSR type games, but obviously there's a whole bevy of OSR games that if you wanted to jump in, you could definitely suggest some of those too. But what about you? What do you, if you had to pick a, a game or two, what would you say? Hey, you go play this game instead. Uh, three games I would suggest people look into um, are one Earth Dawn. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want okay. kind of a rules heavier, more crunchy sort of fantasy game. Uh, I think it's an innovative setting. Um, you can play multiple types of like horror, high fantasy um, type games. I think that's a great game. Um, it's been one of my favorites for years. Um, it is pretty crunchy. Um, I think it's probably more along the lines of the math game, like you said. Uh, mm-hmm. Troika is one that I'm really super interested in. Um, that is along the, uh, the old school Renaissance sort of game. Um, super easy system. Um, super kind of restricted classes uh, well not restricted there's a hundred of them but i mean like they're kind of laid out for you um and they're kind of story starters for what your character becomes like super interesting mm-hmm. again super interesting setting super simple um rule set um and i think the other game that i other fantasy game that i would suggest people check out um is uh conan mm. um uh what is it called conan agent uh ages and dreamed of um i really like the system i was reading some reviews online and they said the 2d20 system isn't very good but i thought it was mm-hmm. really entertaining i thought it was really interesting um and i really liked how the mechanics worked um mm-hmm. and i think those are three games that i think people should, should check out um if you're looking yeah. for like of course pathfinder is on there too if you want to you want a D replacement i think pathfinder is really a lot of the game a lot of people are gonna gonna play and and turn mm-hmm. to and and the the last i think we played we started a pathfinder game uh you myself and a couple friends and like we even enjoyed really making the characters mm-hmm. from that game yeah no i so. i mean pathfinder is is fun and honestly like if you look at my steam library even though i don't have a pathfinder group that i play with i played both of the the I think it's Owlcat games uh, releases of Pathfinder games. Have you um, have you heard of Pathfinder Kingmaker Maker and uh, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous? I've heard of them. I never played them though. Oh, they, I honestly I think between the two of them, uh, I probably have close to three hundred hours played between them. Wow. Just because they're I mean they're they're kind of that isometric. Um, you know, game. They have different components to them. They have they use the Pathfinder rule set for like character classes, and the, they use the world of Galarian, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so it's it's very rich in lore and all that. So I mean, from from like a knowledge about Pathfinder, from like a a setting perspective, I I consider myself fairly knowledgeable from the game, at least you know, like a an awareness of the areas that they focus in on, but also the tangential awareness of the stuff that they bring in, kind of like to talk about the world as a whole. And I, like I said, I, I've had a, a hell of a fun time on both those games. So, I, I love them. I really remember loving 3.5. And I remember mm-hmm. being kind of disappointed when when Wizards went away from it. So I could see liking Pathfinder a lot. Like, a yeah. lot of people say it's too complicated. But I think a lot of the com- complexity that you had in the game made for interesting characters regardless i mean you could min max of course and just do what, what the best character is but mm-hmm. i never felt any even non min max character was totally useless in mm-hmm. that i remember yeah. i think you could probably i mean i'm sure you could do it if you intentionally like took everything bad but i think everything had kind of a fun a fun feeling to it and i remember liking the skill the the skill advancement like it was leveling up was like 
time consuming because it was like you get your level plus whatever and skills every level mm-hmm. and so you had to like sit down and like do math but but it kind of i don't know it i think it attached some mm-hmm. depth to the characters so yeah um well, I think that's one of the things that when we talk about 5e that I feel is missing sometimes where mm-hmm. I talk about there's just like something missing for it. I think that's some of the stuff that I feel is kind of like missing from it. Well, it's a fun game and I enjoy it. I just feel like there's some something about the characters that are missing a little bit. But um, yeah, try. Yeah, go out, try Pathfinder. I think that's um, I watched a video earlier. Uh, it was the Dungeon Dudes uh, that kind of mm-hmm. influenced this uh, this question because they had put out a video five five games that we'll be playing over the summer because um, they're <laughs> they're one of the casts that are hit pretty hard by this OGL mystery. Mm-hmm. Um, and Pathfinder was the last game that they talked about, and they're like, "We just picked up Pathfinder Second Edition." <laughs> I was like, oh, "Of course you did." <laughs> yeah. No, I think I th- so. For me, I think that um, games like Pathfinder and stuff like that. I like I love the epic fantasy that you can kind of get for it. And I think for our group, I would love to run a Pathfinder adventure path. Um I just think that the the challenge is is that the adventure path can be a little bit robust. Um and since we don't really game a ton each week cuz you know we're adults and have those adulting type things. Um you know the adventure path would be like a very long time. <laughs> So right. it would be a lot. Yes. But, I, but I think I think one of the things that D Pathfinder and those types of games do is they kind of encourage that sort of take well, the character do. and play the adventure for as long as possible. Well yeah, um, you I go, think that's like... something that the D I think that's something that the D D style games do well. Um mm-hmm. like I, I rag on I feel like I've ragged a lot on D D in this this podcast, but I think that was the one thing that I realized that they do well is they do the character centric um adventure paths very well well yeah so like and you feel that progression like i mean and i and i think that you know we've talked about it a little bit when you get higher level especially in like D, you know you, you run into these like weird rocket boot fights where like the tag you're at you're dead but um <laughs> you know i mean until then you know you can feel that really good really good progression and i think that there's a lot of systems that don't even try to hit that progression you know like or at least the progression just doesn't feel smooth or epic and i think D does it good so i think what i what i probably want to end this particular note with is that i mean again we want to support creators and i think this channel's dedicated i mean as we said in the very beginning you know we're, we're only talking about D because D is the game it's it's what's in everybody's mind i mean even non role players know what D&D is, or at least they know it by name if they haven't played it or whatever. But that's why we talk about it. But I think both of our interests are understanding like games, new settings, new rule sets. Um, and I know Brent is just itching to do a review of Fatal. Um, I believe that's capital F-A-T-A-L period in between each one of those. Um, I, uh, I think I think there has to be, I think uh, when we start the Patreon, that can be a us reviewing and reading fatal can be a, a goal for amount of money that we make uh if we ever start a patron but i am not going to do that voluntarily without getting paid because <laughs> i need, have you need part, money on the product <laughs> i have read part of fatal and uh it is not an experience that i i relish at all and i feel kind of bad that i laid my you eyes look. upon that that darkened tome well I mean, so, so, but ultimately what we're trying to say is that, you know, if you don't know a game that you'd like to try, we hope to be able to at least provide you the, you know, the bare bones information on what a game does, how it, how it plays a little bit, you know, why you might want to play a game. Um, And so you can continue to enjoy your tabletop hobby, even in, even as the game, even though your game evolves out of something that is just so D and D centric. Now, the funny thing about this is, and I, and I, and I'm going to say that, you know, this is, you know, as we continue, like just talking a little bit about the OGL is that as the OGL is, it's, it is a horrible dumpster fire, you know, definitely wizards is not giving it oxygen. And so I think that there's two ty- there's, there's definitely two camps right now. There's the camp that is like the people that have just not heard of it at all. They don't know what the OGL is and, and they're not creators and they make their own stuff, you know, so they really just use the D and D like rules i don't know what investment they have other than solidarity with other players right like you know like you know um, what I, I talk uh <laughs> there's a friend of mine 
um there's a friend of mine that we, i talked to and he's he is one he's run one game of D ever um and he um usually plays D and he's kind of like you know i just feel like the rules just need to kind of get out of the way most of the time is kind of how he looks at it and he mm-hmm. said that like he said that like he's upset that the company is like screwing so many people but like as far as the game like he doesn't really he doesn't really care and i think that's most people um and i think that's and i think that's the sort of thing that wizards is now depending on is like mm-hmm. all of these people who eventually when and this is just kind of an assumption we're kind of trying to lo- look forward here again is they're they're hoping that all of those people that see their fancy virtual tabletop um you know next year or the year after are going to not pay attention to all the people now that are saying yeah they're they're a hateful company and they abuse their customer base um and they're hoping everybody be like ooh fancy new toy and then just jump jump mm-hmm. on it um well and if we know anything about like internet internet rage genomics right pretty much like cuz cuz what has been amazing is seeing that cuz i don't think this is actually the the Streisand effect i don't think wizards has done anything to kind of cover up the the ogl but they, they really just haven't responded and so no, in kind of the absence of it, all all. The, <laughs> and so in the absence of that well i mean funny enough th- what they did do is they said roll for initiative on like january 6 and a benoit blanc voice on twitter and then like shit hit the fan so apparently that was the combat round so we're just waiting for wizards to take their turn yeah, i don't like that's the thing is like gw or gw wizards again sorry wizards like refusal to like address any of these concerns like it's not a good look like mm-hmm. it's just not it's just not a good look like you said they're not like man i think they are adding oxygen to the fire by not saying anything like they should say something they should do some sort of press release to try and because like in the absence of any information what do people do they immediately well, go they to up. worst case scenario um, or or they invent a worst case scenario that isn't even on the table and then that gets right fucking out the door and i and i think my favorite part is is i have to i have to admit you know i like the guy from dnd shorts he's kind of a little over the top and his you know youtube shorts or whatever the fuck that he runs but he's i mean he's a he's a strong creator you know i mean he's got a patreon he's got a magazine that he publishes i mean him and his i think there's a small group of people that he works with you know just are they are invested but man, did that guy seem like he flipped? If you just read his Twitter thread, did you have you well, seen like his last few tweets over the over the last yeah, week or so? Yeah, I have. And the thing is, is he's one of the ones that I've watched recently. But like the thing about him is, is like I don't mm-hmm. he I don't think he I don't think he makes content for any other games. I think oh, his he doesn't. He is, is solely D and D. So he's literally well, out of the job. name like. It, like the name, like D and D shorts. I feel like I said he hitched his wagon onto this, but the fact that somebody looked at him and then sent him an email. Oh, well, allegedly he received an email from somebody who is a D and D Beyond employee, who he right. feels is verifiable. Um, and I have to say that, like, did you read that tweet from them that showed like the yeah the the yeah the, the letter that says the best thing like, that you can do if you were against this yeah. Is... Yeah. So, so I think that I, I mean, first of all, like what doesn't surprise me here is that, you know, they saw the backlash and that they they would be delaying the rollout of the OGL. Okay. Makes sense. Their decision making is entirely based on the provable impact of their bottom line. Okay. Evil corporation check. Specifically, they're looking at D and D beyond subscribers and cancellations. Okay. So hashtag open D and D hashtag drop that sub, right? Whatever you want to call it. I actually dropped my sub to uh, D&D Beyond today, and so they no longer get my Warlord level subscription or whatever the fuck that I had. Um, so that's, I mean, at least it's five ninety nine out of their pocket. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're hoping yeah, that they the community have, forgets. They have... Yep. Yeah, yeah, they aren't getting mine either. And uh, yeah, I, I well, just, yeah, it's the the only way to impact people is to affect their bottom line. Don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unsubscribe from D and D Beyond. Just stop going to D and D Beyond and patronizing the website. Um, well, you know, if you can avoid buying their products, avoid buying their products. Buy the products from those third party companies. Um, you know, buy the stuff that these creators are making. Why you can get it if the OGL yeah. goes through in the future? Buy the stuff that they make that's system agnostic. 
Exactly. And and I think one last thing about that email, though, that kind of doesn't surprise me is that, you know, first of all, the management it seems to refer to the customers. They're probably like, I feel like that these are, you know, people that have come into the D&D world and that they uh, they're people that are just like, God, these nerds spend a lot of money. How do they, you know, they they whatever they want to call the, the customer base. But it doesn't seem they have like the reverence that, you know, a company would hope you would hope a company would have for their customers because the customers ultimately, you know, pay the bills. Um, but I, the, the part that just hits me as being a customer service professional for however many years um, that it was is that leadership's first communication of the rank and file on the OGL was 30 minutes on 11, 11, 2023. I mean, that like, that hit me and I was like, yep. So these, you know, these poor people at the D&D Beyond, like they're their customer relationship team or whatever it is are like, what is happening with this OGL? And some executive just comes down and is like, okay, you guys are going to have to manage this portal and do all this other bullshit for this thing. And we're, they're like, but the internet is on fire. How are we supposed to respond to that? And they just say, no comment. Like, Oh yeah. Like, like from, yeah. For being in the customer service industry, it's like, we're on fire right now. And they're just like, just ignore it. And it's like, we have yeah. a million, like, if, I don't know if I, I'm sure wizards has a customer service number. Like, could you imagine what the call center was like when this stuff started to happen? Like, well, oh, man. I mean, but you're, but you like, but being in the customer service, the one thing I can tell you definitely is don't, don't attack the people on social media. Don't attack the, don't call the customer service team and be like, you motherfuckers fix this now. Right. Like the customer service team at the pos at the bottom. I mean, what you can do is they, you can tell them your complaint and they can usually put that in some sort of system that tracks complaints and they can go, Oh, we've had a spike in these complaints. And the people at the top can decide if that matters or not. And as you right. can see from that email, it basically seems like, they they're saying this is blown way out of proportion and that you know the community is overreacting and that the storm will pass and that people's memories are short and the internet will give them something new to be mad about so um but it but it, it just it hurts my brain to think that yep corporations are going to corporate is that yep. a word or they yep. corporations well, are going to business corporations like, are going to business yeah, yeah they're not going to like yeah they just i don't know it just seems out of touch to me just like i said so much of like the problem with a gaming company do this like dnd is like mm -hmm. like they said it's a feeling it's not it's like you know you can go into a gaming store and talk about somebody with dnd probably like hey mm -hmm. have you ever played this game and you can have a conversation about it so yeah. to take that away is i don't know it's just painful but i'm gonna stress again if anybody listening to this if you have a D and D beyond subscription and, and you care at all about what's going on, you should mm -hmm. remove your subscription for now. Um, yeah. Hope maybe, uh, you know, at least for now so that the, their numbers are impact. So they see it, how big of a deal this is. And, and, you know, take that five ninety nine and go buy some PDF adventures on drive through RPG. Um, like cause there's that. definitely, there's definitely third party creators on drive through RPG that have books cheap. Um, 599 that could use the money right now yeah um, so it's true and and i mean even if you wanted to save up that 599 a month and use it to uh you know build up something you know build up toward a little kitty towards you know your favorite hobby games who knows i mean i'm not telling you how to to run your finances but you know there's a lot of, there's a lot of better money to spend than than dnd &D right now but speaking of which, um, and I know we talked a lot about Pathfinder just a minute ago, but I really did appreciate um, the, you know, Paizo and their response to this entire thing is that they're basically like, say, come at me, bro. And they're going to put out their new open license, um, which is, I mean, amazing that they're just like, you know what? We understand that everything was kind of built on this, but we're going to make this irrevocable open RPG creative license. And we want the community to really celebrate open gaming. And I, and I think we talked about it last time when I was like, well, this is kind of like how home brewers and small batch breweries work is that, you know, everybody wants everybody to be successful. And, you know, and we want everybody to really just not be intimidated by that or get edged out or have, you know, they want it to be a very collaborative community. And I think Paizo leading the charge with some of these other, you know, bigger publishers, you know, like Chaosium and those kind of things. Um, I think I saw some really big names on that, like Paizo, Cobalt Press, Chaosium, Green Ronin, Legendary Games, Rogue Genius. I mean, 
that's a lot of people that are getting behind this new license. And to your point, I think that's going to create the the monster that plays the wizard at the end of the well, day. Well, yeah, uh, Modifius, they released, they sent out an email recently. I was on it um, mm-hmm. to all of their customers that was basically like, hey, join our, make your, join our community where you can make all of your own stuff. Um, like, there's just so much of that right now because, like, and that is another thing. There's a lot of talented people making third-party content that maybe they mm-hmm. just made it for D&D. And now they're going to go and they're going to make Numenera Adventures and Monty Cook Games mm-hmm. will be, will blow up. I mean, Monty Cook Games is on there. Um, yeah. You know, like, there's just so much. There's more quality content creators out there than w- Wizards even knows. And the part mm-hmm. that gets me the most is, like, you took all of these people that would shill for your product, that would that tell everyone, tell all of their viewers, probably all their friends, I love D&D. D&D is the hobby that I do. D&D is the game that I play. Mm-hmm. And now they've, <laughs> they've flipped the switch and all of these um, promoters, there's a, there's a customer service term for you, um, that all of these promoters of your product are now, what, what is the opposite, detractors? They're, they're mega detractors at this point. Yeah. I like them. Yeah, they're <laughs> mega detractors. Yeah, they're like, you know, Unicron forming a giant robot that's going to try and destroy. Like, they're going to actively tell people, no, they're a bad faith business. Well, and, like, and, the, and the worst part about it is, what, is you, you what know how this know? works. Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, no, well, go. you know how this works. Like, the promoters... You know, a promoter, you might be lucky if they tell one to two people, right? Oh, yep. I love, I love this thing that I do. And they, I mean, these channels are, are unique in that regard because, you know, I mean, when you get people using a product, it's rare for them to be so many people just actively going, this product is good. This is how you become better at the product. This is some really cool things about it. These are some news about it, whatever you want to call it. But for whatever reason, when somebody hates something, right, it's like they tell 10 people, 20 people. So you basically took people that were actually getting to an audience and you basically said, hey, guess what? Rage incoming. And, and you know what? People like to tune into that shit too. So it's like, you're help- like the good news is, is these small con- smaller content creators are getting huge audiences over this, or at least huge bump in numbers um, over this kind of stuff, even though it may not be content they want to do. And I, do you watch Dungeon Craft at all? Have you ever seen that guy? I have not. Uh, you know, Dungeon Craft, I like the guy. Like he's he's smart. He's very very interesting. And he had, and he was like, uh, he did it recently. Did his like three hundred epi- three hundred episode, and it was like, you know, I'm just gonna take this channel and burn it all down because what he discovered is that you know he was covering that one D and D stuff and kind of getting in with the content and the hype. And those were some of his biggest videos on his channel, like of all time. You know, like wait, no, I did. Before. I don't want. I didn't watch it, but I did see that video today. Actually, oh, did? where he said. <laughs> Yeah, where the title of the video is, and now I ruined my own YouTube channel or something like yeah, that. Yeah, because yep, because yep. And I think that this is the kind of guy that, I mean, he's he's loved the hobby for so long, and and he's a really talented and and good creator, and I think that he's you know earned every one of the people that listens to him. Um, and I listened, watched that video, and I was like, this guy's got some great points about how he's he's not going to jump on the digital bandwagon. He's also going to stop, and this is why he said he was going to burn his channel down or whatever it was, is because he was like, you know what? I don't really care about 1DD. I just want to play D&D. So he was going to go back to like different kinds of channel updates. And he knew that that would kind of slow his growth and maybe alienate some of the subscribers that were there just for the 1D&D content and stuff like that. But I feel like that's probably the direction we're going to go. Because after this, I really don't want to talk about 1D&D or uh, WotC very much. Unless, unless oh, obviously, they decide to somehow make this dumpster fire even worse. I mean, they could they could just go out there and basically say, you know what, what that what that email said is true, and we think you're all low life <laughs> degenerates, and we hate nerds or something. <laughs> I guess guess if they came out next week and said that, then yeah, we'd be covered. They're gonna that. be they're just gonna say, and go watch our movie, and that'll be the that'll be the length of the announcement. You're all terrible, and go watch our movie. That'll be yeah. that'll be the announcement. <laughs> there, there, a, a guy just uh, did i tell you I, so one thing i will say real quick that i thought was interesting is i i was scrolling through youtube and i saw a video of a a wizards of the coast representative talking about dnt at gen con in front of mm-hmm. people and like i was like man i can't even imagine that happening today like they would be booed and stuff would be thrown at them and i was just like i just don't oh man this is gonna be 
the last time a business did such a misstep is was GW um, with the famous quote where the guy was like, we are a model company, not a rules company. And like the, they didn't sell any of the game that was their first test run of this, the, this, this philosophy. And like, he was just like crucified and thrown out the door. They were just like, they, they fired him as CEO and hired somebody else. And, like, and I think that's like, I think that's probably the only like, like, I think if the, if that's the if that's what's going to happen, it seems like that would be what happens in this case, where somebody's like, somebody gets axed, and then they're like, no, new friendly people are in charge now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like well, that's the only we 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 hired hobbits to run to want run wizards now. Look, it's it's our well not they're not legally hobbits. They're you know distinguished from hobbits because God, we don't want to get sued by them either. But they're nice and you should pay attention to them. And, you know, we're going to back off this, this, you know, dumpster fire that, that we've started. Well, it's oh. funny though, because I think, I think like the, the part that, you know, we had a friend that mentioned this is that like, if this is one of those things where it's like, wizards was just like, okay, well, you know what, going forward, we're going to do this new OGL. Here's the, the, the 29 page, 9,000 word legalese thing that you'd be getting. Um, but it's not going to start for like, you know, eight months or whatever it is. You know, we want to give you time to make decisions as to what that's going to mean, and we're going to do this stuff. But they didn't. They just said, like, oh, by the way, you have until, like, the 13th to, to <laughs> you know, like, whatever, a week right. to really, like, decide your entire future and all that stuff. And I thought that was kind of bad. So it does make me think that maybe there's somebody, you know, at this, at Wizards who's like, you know what? <laughs> I think the word is what nagging, where they use emotional manipulation to get people to like, you know, try to get like wizards, you know, kind of get like they they tell us all these negative compliments, and then we're supposed to be like, oh, give us more, daddy wizards or something like that. There was uh, there, there there was a video I saw where that's what that's what he said. It, it's a common emotional manipulation tactic to give the worst thing possible, and then like stage it back for the next release. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't. So people go, "Oh, well, I can sign that because that's not as bad as the other one." And like, what well, exactly? Poison, that's what a what a poison trap that is. Well, and that's what I was kind of wondering if this is what it turns into is that they like, uh, okay, we just gave you the stick. Let's give you a little bit of the sweet vinegar. You know, like eh, it's still vinegar, but you know, it's not a stick. <laughs> yeah, I I hope I hope that. People are wise to that. I hope that the people that that look at it are wise to that. Although well, with, with Wizards saying that we we want to own all your products, yeah. like I don't, I think that's I think that's their money grab. Like that's their under monetization, right? Well, there's all these yeah. products that that have our IP that we should that we that should be ours that we should be making money off of, and I think that's. I think that's I think that's the that's the under monetization, right? So I don't know if they're I don't know if if that's the line that they're taking. I don't know if they can take a step back from that. So, no, well, I and I mean it was it was interesting because I know you shared that video with me that kind of showed the prescience of Matt Coville, but you know he's like, well, yeah. why would you why when you're D and D like why would you want somebody that's like this third party publisher to raise two million dollars in Kickstarter and you not see a dime of that, right? You should be like, that's my money, like. Well, that, they are saying that's their money, but yeah, well, that's what they're doing now. But it's like, but the just the ama- amazing amount of prescience and kind of forethought that he was having about how this is all going to play out was pretty. pretty but the thing is, it's like it's not like the problem is, and and I don't know how many games you kickstarted in the past. I kickstarted uh, a game in 2020 called um, the Orpheus Protocol. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also a great, uh, great podcast. Um, real play podcast of that same game the game that the the guy um his name's rob stiff uh he wrote and developed it it's it's a fun podcast and i'm really looking forward to the game um but like he made a bunch of like i think they made they they crushed their like kickstarter goal if i remember right and like like you don't really make that money (laughs) like 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 in order to make that money you promise things um, you know, you have your, your goals. So like that money is kind of reserved. So yeah, it's $2 million, but like, it's not real dollars. It's like product dollars. Like, like, so for them to say that there's all this money is like, 
well, if you would have made the product, how much would you have spent on it? I think is what really wizards should look at. Like, like Matt Colville in that same interview said, um, one of the reasons the, the OGL exists is because they didn't want to write adventures for their games because mm-hmm. they're expensive and they don't cost very, they, they don't, you can't make them very cost very much because they're usually not very long. Um, so there's all these, there, there's all these resources that you dedicate to doing it that cost money that they don't really want to, they don't really want to spend. So they mm-hmm. made the OGL so people could write adventures for their game and mm-hmm. people wrote adventures for the game and got people buying the core rules and, and playing the game. And yeah, like what a, what a, what a brilliant thing, because like, then you have a game, it's like, Oh, we have the rules. Now you're selling yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and like, like now think of all those, think of all those adventures. Like if they would have, like that's what they should think of. How much money would we have spent built making all these adventures that are out there now for people to use our our game rules that they buy? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's that's the that's the short sightedness of of this is it's not like it's like I don't know, it's 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 not a business model that anybody else ha- like there's ever like I I don't can't think of another business like it where it's like, no, we have the core. And you can make little little offshoots of this core, but ultimately you still need our stuff to do that, to make your own stuff, you know? So um, I just think I just think they, they shot themselves a little bit. What are they going to do, make their own adventure books? Like, I think it's clear that they don't really want to do that. Well, and I mean, I think I think you, you know, I mean, it's it's been mentioned at least, you know, everyone kind of remembers what happened with the fourth ed. And if they think, they think this is some brilliant thing that it's like not history repeating itself because this time it's going to be different. I feel like, I mean, I feel bad for the D and D there the one D and D team. Cause you know, it sounds like those guys are putting an effort to overhaul the game and maybe have lofty ideas, at least, you know, that they themselves are, you know, making the, making the game better for the hobby and, you know, cementing D and D's forever position as the most recognizable game in the space. But now, I mean, like Jeremy Crawford, do you think he got message? Like <laughs> they're like, what's happening with the SOGL? And he's like, I just make games, man. Like I'm sure he did. Actually, so here's something funny that I read. Um uh Dennis Detweiler, one of the guys that makes um uh Delta Green, um mm-hmm. another great game. People should go out buy it. Um but uh he makes Delta Green and he said he said we're getting email. He said one of on one of his posts on Twitter, he said, We're getting emails of people asking us how OG how the OGL situation is going to affect us as Delta Green. And we're an a hundred percent unrelated game. Um and he said, So it won't affect us at all. But he said, What it must be like at Wizards right now if we're getting questions about this. Well yeah, um, well that and I think that's the oh. the question is because it's just like this OGL seems to be in places you don't expect. I mean, like Pathfinder used it, but kind of only in name and then other games used it. Like a friend of ours mentioned that like the FUD system used it just because they needed something, you know, like. It's like weird. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what. um It'll be interesting to see what happened. Like, well, I mean, so I think the test is going to be is that if if I remember correctly, people want stuff to be released on like Friday night's news. Like the news cycle for Friday is like supposed to be the best time to drop bad information. So if there is a response, I can expect there to be some marketing way that they try to slip this in unnoticed, you know, and. And if, if and if there is any response to this OGL stuff, it's going to be like the most sanitized, you know, unfeeling corporate speak that you could probably imagine. We understand that the community is really frustrated about changes that they've heard about with the OGL, blah, blah, blah. We're here to affirm our commitment <laughs> or some shit like that, right? right. Well, that's, Wizards, uh, you're, if you're looking for a speech writer, I'll, I'll write your speech for you. I can, <laughs> I can say all the right words and have it be as soulless as anything. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. Well, that's also Detweiler also said that in the same Twitter like thing. He said, if they haven't said anything yet, they're probably going to say it on Friday. And man, it's probably going to be bad. <laughs> so, yeah. um, again, guys, uh, anybody listening, we want to 
you know, say that uh, D&D isn't really going to be what we talk about <laughs> mostly anyways. This has this doesn't impact us very much as either content creators right now or really as people that run and play games because we've we've done D&D and so we're trying other stuff. But it does affect people that we think are important, which are the content creators out there. Um, and so you probably won't hear us talk about D&D very much anymore, like Mike said. Um, unless something happens and we feel it's newsworthy. Um, but it's just kind of an interesting time uh, in the role-playing game hobby with the biggest, the elephant in the room kind of stepping on the people holding it up. Yeah. I don't know the perfect analogy for this one, but I think the elephant rolling over the mouse is probably... Not a bad, not a bad way to go. Well, except right. it's it's the mice. It's a it's the mice have the elephant up on like a dais, and they're like they've been carrying it around. Like that's the thing. It's like it's not it's not just like there's a mouse running under the the elephant's feet. It's like these people have all done things to a hundred percent benefit Wizards of the Coast. And yes, they've mm -hmm. made a little money on this. Uh, they've made a little money out of it, but they definitely aren't as big and they definitely are getting stepped on much harder than they should it's true um, it's true so so like i said so, go out support those third-party content creators go buy their stuff while you can um mm. you know support them drop your D, D beyond subscription um yeah that's and, really my you know two cents and if, and if you don't know where to go and our podcast doesn't give you an idea because you know you just you didn't hear about anything like that Go to your local game store, you know, go down to the shop, go, hey, I hate D&D. Or maybe just say, I'm looking for a new role playing game. One of the two. Uh, and they'll probably have shelves of games that you can look at if you live in a town of any size that has a, a, a game store that has books on shelves. Right. So don't or be afraid go, to look. For... Just, just go grab one. The cover looks interesting. And then ask the guy behind the counter. Hey, um. Is this game? You know, uh, is it involved in OGL? Um, you know, ask them that sort of things, and then you know, just try it out. Like, yeah, it could be yeah. a grand time uh, for everyone, and hopefully, exactly. it works out that way. Yeah. So, so uh, raise your drink, Brent, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna a toast to a new era and the uh, the horrible. I mean, I feel like this is like a toast to the Titanic, but, you know, I mean, like, you know what? New opportunities. We're going to see what, what happens. We're going to definitely boldly go where we go, um, which I know is not the quote, but whatever. And uh, we we'll look forward go where to... where we go. That's, that's our first... Uh, that'll be our first uh, Roll Wise shirt. Uh, boldly go oh. where we go. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and we're going to... You know, we're just going to do it. And so if you guys enjoy us, if you guys want to catch us on social media, hit us up on Twitter, hit us up, uh, you know, email us at rollwiseguys at gmail.com. Uh, whatever you want to do to, to connect. Uh, we're, we don't have a lot of people hanging out with us right now. So, uh, feel free to, to join in and say hello. Um, with that, I think, uh, next week we're probably going to do a little bit of a postmortem on, on, uh, our basin game. So spoilers, wait, spoilers, there will be spoilers. Is that, is that legal sentence? Whatever. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a sentence. I don't know if it makes much sense as a sentence, but it is a sentence. Um, there will be spoilers on the adventure that we ran. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you but if you're thinking is... about running a basin game and you kind of want to get some input from you know a person who's played it and a person who's run it, um, you know we're going to give our two cents next week, um, and then after that, sky's the limit. Who knows what we'll talk about? Well, you don't want to adhere to one of those pesky schedules we're just two guys that like to talk about shit so we are not organized people ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry yeah but we are two guys that like to talk about shit two, two guys one podcast Ooh, I, I believe i believe you suggested that as a name at one point for the record i i did i think you know you my did. brain you know what? You can attribute that to me, but I'm not going to take the blame for that because I don't remember that at all. So I think that's I think that's just you trying to shovel that one on me. I um, will have to scroll back in our conversation because I bet I can find it. Yes, uh, and then I'll be disappointed in myself when I find out it was me. 
<laughs> I don't even remember Anyways, it, so I could have been the one that sent it. Uh, but th- on, let- on that note, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, two guys on one podcast signing out. Uh, I'm going to do a real, real close. Thank you for joining us today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as always, roll wise and roll well. And see. You.